This is an intro to all of the videos that I'm about to release because I didn't want, I wanted to show um, what my edible landscapes look like, each individual one, rather than do one big video because that can be really long and I think it's a lot to take in, you know, for one video. So, I'm going to make this the intro to each one of the videos and you can bypass this if you've already seen um, one in this series. So I'm doing like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine videos. So <laughs> those are all of my um, garden beds. So um, it's but the, the one thing that I didn't say in the video, if you're new to my channel, I do mostly edible landscaping for a very specific reasons, a reason because I've taken the Master Gardener's class, I've taken the permaculture class, I've taken herbal classes, I've taken um, other classes, and everything just kind of laps over. And there's holes in each one of them. And but where they la they all lap over the companion planting the um, soil food web it all overlaps and so the way that i'm doing things now edible landscaping wise is because i've done the raised beds i've done you know intensive gardening i've done all the things all of the methodologies that there are in gardening and this is the one that makes the most sense to me again um, if you're watching this video, you can bypass this intro and I'll put it by chapter so you can see, okay, you can just click on the chapter below here. Um, this goes straight to that video. So this is the introduction and I hope you enjoy. Also, the other thing that I want you to keep in mind is the reason that I did this is to keep it real, right? If you're on Pinterest or you're on YouTube or you're online anywhere, most of the time people are going to show the that one magical moment where the salvia is blooming or the peanuts are blooming or the larkspur is blooming so this is for my purposes for me as well because i'm going to take this information i do track it on a map where i write everything down and um but i haven't had time so i'm just like you know it's about to rain i'm gonna get the peanuts in the ground or it's about to rain, I'm gonna get the potatoes in the ground, or it's about to rain, I'm gonna get the ranunculus in the ground. So um, throughout the year, uh, my plan is to do an update. Here's the magic moment, right? Here's, um, here's what the potato looks like when it has the bloom on it. So, and you'll see throughout these videos that there are potatoes in almost every bed Maybe not every bed, but you know, like where the strawberries are and all that, but how it all comes together. So um, again, you know, I just want people to know you don't have to um, have lumber to grow food. So many people think that you, and if you do, you know, I'm not gonna fault you for it. I've just been down that road. I know the amount of money and the amount of work that it takes. And when it is first built, it's beautiful. But then over the years, it starts to wear down and the grass gets in there anyway. It goes through the little cracks and it's not good to put the plastic in there. And you know, just all the things. It's from my experience, this is something that has grown from over 20 years of, of doing this. And so I just wanna get the message out about edible landscaping. You can call it a food forest. You could call it companion planting. It's basically, edible. it's landscaping with food. And you'll see it's in my front, I'm on my front porch right now and you can hear the traffic going by. This is what people see when they look into my yard. The other thing that I really like about edible landscaping, I have to point out to you what things are. It's not rows of potatoes, rows of corn, rows of beans, rows of this, rows of that. It's, it's all camouflage. It's camouflage from two-legged creatures, from three-legged creatures, from four-legged creatures, from seven-legged creatures, <laughs> creatures, whatever. It's camouflage with the bugs. It's camouflage from the, the deer. It's camouflage from the rabbits. It's camouflage from a lot of things. And mostly you'll see that I have some prevention for things getting in there, but it's mostly to protect the seedlings. So anyway, uh, I hope you enjoy the videos. I'll talk to you later. Bye for now. So everything from this front bed 
to the porch beds, to the kitchen bed, to where I had the cactus behind the cabana, all that I call zone one. And I do include the permaculture bed as zone one as well. And this is zone two. This is all of the front beds. That's that, that long, this is what I call my river of mulch here. Um, this bed, this bed, and the one right off of the bunkhouse. Um, you can kind of see it, that's where I've had my artichokes in the past. Winter got them last year, last couple years, and the drought. <laughs> but this area, this area, and that area is zone two. And that's a lot, but that's zone two. And the reason that I do it that way is because, yeah, it's a zones of use. It's a permaculture thing. And um, there's just, it's just a lot here when you look at, I'll do a separate video on what all I have growing in here. Oops, hose got out, but it's a lot. And so our well and our pressure tank has a hard time keeping up with when it's very, there's a lot of drought, like was last year. It was hard to keep up with all of the watering. I may switch that bed and the, the that hugel two back there and this bed right here to a different zone because of the watering. But I can kind of plan my time like this is the zone I'm going to be working in today. This is the zone I'm going to be watering today. This is the zone I'm going to be planting today. Captain's log. Gardener's log. I guess it's a glog. <laughs> We're going to call it a glog. Um, so this is oregano right here. I've, I've already talked in other videos about uh, microclimates. This is the coolest microclimate I have right here. But I have, I need to do some cleanup. See, here's last year's, and I've been doing it a little bit at a time, but last year's growth from the oregano. And uh, I just need to come clean this part up. I think it's the only part I haven't cleaned up yet. It's just some oregano, uh, oregano I didn't harvest last year. So um, we've got some daylilies I need to move. We've got some motherwort. We've got some more oregano. Um, let me try to do both sides at the same time. So this is the patch I was talking about. I've got asparagus growing in there. Um, I've got larkspur growing all throughout here. Um, but we've got culinary sage. We've got catnip. Catnip, catnip, catnip. Just volunteered from last year. Olive trees. I found out that these, I did a little bit of research and they had them really cheap at Home Depot. It was like $25, was it, was it say? Let me see, it still has a tag on it. I just planted these. $22.98, that's the cheapest I've ever seen olive trees. So I got two of them. And uh, I, it said it needs dry, hot summers and mild winters. So normally that's what we have here. Um, the culinary sage, culinary sage, I'm going to be propagating more sage. They're just gorgeous. And the, I don't need that much to eat, but they're just beautiful. Um, and then we've got a lot of larkspur. Um, we've got wild lettuce. We've got blue bonnets in here as well. We've got catnip. I could smell the catnip whenever I was kind of cleaning this up a little bit. We've got watermelons here. Black diamond watermelons. We've got a lot more plantain. Yay! A lot of people think this is a weed. I guess a weed is whatever you say it is. The blue bonnets. Okay. <laughs> the blue bonnets. I collected a lot of seed last year and I lost a lot of my blue bonnets. That's why it's illegal to pick blue bonnets in Texas, in the Texas lands, because if you collect the seed, it's not going to come back every year. But um, we've just got blue bonnets everywhere and I've decided I'm going to change my whole thinking on how I do my blue bonnets and I'm really excited about it. I'll do that in another video. Cleavers. 
um, Larkspur, Cannas, there. Everything's just coming up. Okay, so pomegranate trees. Now this, these little baskets are here because I didn't want the dogs or the cats or the deer or rabbits or whatever bothering these. Um, just because I just transplanted. We've got sugar snap peas coming up back there. We have um, bush beans, culinary sage, thyme, more peppers, peppers, peppers. So I'm kind of doing these in clusters when I do my planting. So this is really still a blank canvas for me. Yes, I have a lot of stuff in here, but that larkspur is going to play out when it gets too hot. It's gonna grow up real big and tall, put on the most beautiful purple spiky flowers and everything just kind of, it grows in shifts. Just think of it that way, like shifts. <laughs> so by the time the watermelons start growing, all of this is gonna be done. It's gonna be done. The blue bonnets will be done. The wild lettuce will be done. The Any kind of lettuce is gonna be done. And this is where this fence line right here is where I'll um, plant tomatoes because tomato cages don't work. But what you see on there right now is grapevine. Okay, you know what's really cool? I'll show you something that's really cool. Here's my cannas. Make sure I'm not stepping on any cilantro. Cilantro is self-seeded, it's coming up. Um, if you cut this grapevine, uh, it just starts dripping like a water faucet. And I'm just wondering, is it okay to drink that? Like if you were in a survival situation, if you cut a grapevine, could you drink the water from that? Somebody let me know if you know anything about that. If, okay, there's some, there's some cilantro right there mixed in with the blue bonnet. And there's some cilantro. The cilantro just self-seeded itself. Love those plants that self-seed. They're as good as perennials in my book. Okay. Those pomegranate trees put on the most beautiful carnation-like flowers. And then they put on the, the fruit and it's a beautiful thing. Okay, here's another one of my motion detector, mostly for the dogs and the deer, which it usually gets me is who it gets. Um, I have one of those in here. I'm planning on buying a few more of those. I'm sold on those things. More oregano, sage, thyme. Look, isn't that beautiful? It's just such a beautiful little sub shrub. I would consider that a sub shrub. This was a big, big plant. And man, that drought really got a lot of my stuff last year. This is time. I had to really clean this up. And then more gladiolas, irises. Let me make sure I'm not stepping on anything. Another pomegranate tree, oregano, there's cilantro all through here, cleavers all through here. And then these are the plum trees. And I didn't even get the other side. I guess I'm just gonna have to do a separate video for that. This one just got through. This one um, blooms a little bit later than this one. Oh yeah, there's some. Let me see if I can find them. Little bitty. This is what is this so exciting about gardening is seeing all your babies. All those little bitty plums. And then this one bloomed first. There's more sage onions, garlic, gladiolas back there. Let's see if I can find, yep, yeah, there's one right there. And I don't remember which one's which. I'd have to look at my um, garden, my map. See that one right there? But they're all over here, but you have to really look to find them. There's some more plums. I don't remember, I think I have a Stanley and a Methley and a, I had a Santa Rosa right there, but that one died. I don't remember which one's which, but they're plum trees. And then um, back in here is usually where I'll plant, I get the morning shade, afternoon sun because of these juniper cedar trees right here. Okay, so this is when you first drive in the driveway. I don't, I'm not sure, blank canvas right here for sure. Okay. okay, so we have irises, we have a dead tree. I think that was from the drought from last year and a combination of the snowmageddon. I'm not sure what happened. 
there, but we have Shasta daisies, we have passion fruit. That's what that vine is that you see. But passion fruit coming up everywhere. I think I'm gonna be pulling these up just like the goji berries that I did in the other video. I'm gonna be pulling these up. These just take over. They're very happy to grow right here, but I'm gonna be pulling a lot of these up, potting them up and maybe selling them. Shasta daisies, gladiolas, cantaloupes, oregano, forsythia, forsythia, oregano, nephophia, tiger lilies. These don't seem to be as happy right here as those do over in the um, hugel culture bed. Bachelor buttons, a lot of this stuff, the only thing I planted is what you see the white markers for as far as this year. The rest of this is all perennial. The Shasta daisies, the irises, the passion fruit, the uh, gladiolas, the oregano, forsythia. That's all. I didn't plant any of that this year. This is all, <laughs> thank goodness, this is all from years gone by. There's some more passion fruit, passion fruit, passion fruit. Okay, these bachelor buttons self-seeded, which to me is almost the same thing as a perennial. Um, some Shasta daisies and then uh, bachelor buttons. I had flax growing all in here last year. So some of that might be flax. Irises. I'm going to need to dig these, all of my irises up. Um, then just separate them. You're supposed to do that every five years. This, this is year six. What do we have here? Let's see. Watermelon, an orange type watermelon. More peppers on this little trellis here. Let me get in there. <clears throat> On this little trellis here, I have sweet peas growing right now. And uh, as soon as my tomatoes are ready uh, from the greenhouse, I'll be planting like a cherry type tomato on that one. On the one that I did over there that, that has the sweet peas growing on it, I'll be planting something else that grows up, either a pole bean or something that likes to grow vertical. Um, this is something that I was trying for the strawberries. Um, a little cage to keep the birds off. The birds are my biggest pest for the strawberries. But, um, and some peppers. And last year I planted a whole bunch of potatoes, but this is kind of a blank slate. I have all these perennials here. There's more oregano, um, all of these perennials here, but uh, I have a lot of space where I can still poke some things in. Chives, chives, chives. Uh, the motherwort, the, um, I'm not sure what those are, but they're growing back and I've liked them. They just kind of popped up on their own. Daylilies. Uh, the daylilies, I'm going to be pulling those out and putting them more in a sun position. I decided I don't want to trim off these branches to open this up. I want to have a place where things can have some overstory protection. And that'll do it for this one.